We are proud of the history that surrounds us, of the great events and names that make the story of our town. We are proud to be children born of Preston. Let us sing it clear and loud, for we are Here in Preston, the prosperity and success of the town has been built upon the many trades and tradespeople who've made the place their home. At Broughton, some pupils and teachers are launching a project to research Preston's history by looking at those trades, particularly during the 19th century, the period of great industrial revolution. Now, my understanding of what we're here for is to learn a lot more about Preston and the trades in Preston, so what people did for a living. Uh, and in terms of timescales, in the 19th century, around the middle of the 19th century, Phase one of the project will involve away days at Lancashire Libraries and Museums, where pupils will acquire and use research skills and evaluate and record their findings. At the Lancashire Records Office, pupils were able to look in the trade directories from the 19th century. These are books listing all the trades of the town alphabetically and all of the people involved in those trades. They are a little like the Yellow Pages phone book of today. Bleachers, baker, furniture broker. The project looked in particular at businesses located on Friargate, one of the oldest streets in the city dating from the medieval period. The record office staff gave a special visit to the strong rooms to show how the documents are kept. I don't know how much space to take up, there are actually over eight miles of shelves here. So you probably didn't re realise when you arrived how that all this is kind of sat behind the scenes. So they're called strong rooms for a reason. It's because they're secure, yeah? So concrete, no windows. That's for security. So you can't be yeah? Because as well as being valuable from a point of view of information point of view, they actually are quite valuable as well in the so yeah. It also means because the walls are concrete, the walls are concrete, uh, it minimises risk of fire as well. You can feel the temperature, and that's all the strong rooms are air conditioned, uh, so that's to keep the environmental conditions stable. So that the records, and mainly most of them are on paper, parchment, and in certain conditions, if it was too hot or too moist, then the records would okay, see a way and lose that information. So that's why the temperature is like And our catalogue is actually available online, so people can go online and search if they're interested in a particular subject to see what we've got. Shelf has a number, yeah. Every box has a number, and then these numbers on here are reference numbers to what's inside that. And that's another a real big consideration that things don't get lost. You can probably tell by the, <coughs> the extent to which it's packaged that it's something important. So we have done the Tudors at school. So that's Queen Elizabeth's signature. So this is a letter that was written by. She certainly signed it. You imagine somebody else wrote the letter. She probably was still the easy bit. So this was written. From, uh, this went from Elizabeth I to the Emperor of China. Although that's the that's the part of the story, see, because it never got there because it's here. But why it never got there, nobody really knows. And it's kind of one of our most, as you can imagine, most treasured items. So this would be real gold that you can see there. All this will be done by hand. So when you get documents like bank cards or passports or, or pan notes or anything that you know has a security device on, maybe a watermark or a, a hologram or yeah, something to prove that it's the original thing. Then that's what this is what seals were used for. So all important men. This is like a signature in a way. Some important documents were brought from the strong room for pupils to look at. Handling such old books needs special gloves to be worn to protect them. He was a walker at Horrocks. We've just found his name. His name is Rick May here. We found him in a list of trades that were brought in for a kind of vote. We don't know what it was for yet, but we do know that it was something that a local community was asked to poll on. In 1790, uh, the rules were changed such that anybody could trade in press. You didn't have to be a member of the guild. Uh, but they still kept, because the guild had become such an important institution, and every 20 years, I don't think you've heard of the Preston 
old are you? Were you, were you alive at the last Preston Guild? The last Preston Guild was 1992. No, you no, see. So you've never been you've never been alive. alive Preston Guild. So I'll leave that out there. For many centuries, Preston has held a guild celebration once every 20 years. Historically, this was a way of updating the list of those people or burgesses who are allowed by law to trade in the town. Here, pupils are looking at the official guild rolls from 1802 and 1922. These are very valuable documents. The next guild is due to take place in 2012. The Guild is traditionally a week of events and celebrations originally based around a procession through the town by all the trades and their Guild groups. Nowadays, events are spread more evenly over the whole year. The main week is always towards the end of August or the beginning of September. A Guild Court is held to renew the names on the Guild Rolls. Good. I've just discovered that in 1853 there were 17 pubs on Friargate and later we're going to find out how many are still there. Friargate is one of the oldest routes into the centre of Preston. Originally used by the monastic friars who gave it its name, it has, since medieval times, been a street of shops and traders. The challenge for pupils was to see if any of the businesses they had researched had left any mark on the Friargate of today. A trip to a special exhibition at the Harris Library would help them come to some conclusions. We are proud of the history that surrounds us, of the great events and names that make the story of our town. We are proud to be children born of Preston, let us sing it clear and loud, for we are proud.